a lot of people have been asking me how you add liquidity uh, to Gen 2. Um, I have adjusted the tokenomics, so it's now getting more liquidity every time there is a buy or a sell. But some people are just saying they want to put liquidity in. They've bought, they want to hold, they don't want to sell, but they want to support it by putting their tokens into liquidity. So I'm going to show you how you do this. But I do want to warn you, what you're dealing with is pancake swap when you add liquidity. And sometimes when you try and get it back out later, it can be difficult. So I'm going to add some. I'm then going to take it out to show you how you do that and what problems you might come up against and the way you get around them. And then I'm going to add it back in again because I want it to be in there. So if you want to add liquidity, this is what you do. Um, we're going to pop over to, I'll tell you what, first of all, we need the contract code. Uh, so I'm on the chart and the contract code is this up here in the URL. So I'm just going to copy that to begin with. It's on my clipboard. Now I need to go to pancake.finance. Now you used to be able to just click on a button to get there, but I don't think you can do that anymore. Um, you might be able to do it through here. No, that's going to be BSC scan, isn't it? Yes. So go to pancake.finance uh, and click on trade and click on liquidity and then click on add liquidity. And you have to choose the pairing. So first of all, you have to paste in the contract ID. It might take a while to pop up, but when it does, just click on that, you've got Gen 2. Then you select the other option, which is uh, BNB, which is what we're going to be adding. So we're gonna click on the BNB option. And 0 0.001, I'm sure I've got more than that. Oh, I've gotta connect my, yes, do connect your wallet. So there we go. So I've connected my wallet. It's now got a lot more in there and uh, it's going to notice. So when you add this in, what you need to do is to do the same price ratio as when I added the very first initial liquidity. That can never change. Now it's gonna calculate that for you. So I put all of the tokens in, I put two BNB in, and then I burned it. And that's what I did to begin with. So if you start adding some tokens, like if I put all my tokens in, it's gonna require 1.719 uh, BNB in liquidity for me to be able to do that. If I put all of the BNB in, it would require this many tokens, which I don't have enough. Uh, so I can put this in, it takes 1.7 BNB, and uh, then I can approve it, and then it would be in there. And it's like there is a thing that can happen uh, where you can lose money if your token uh, goes up in value uh, quite a lot while it's in here, that can affect you. It's called impermanent loss. Um, please look at videos on the internet about it if it's something you want to research because if I tell you about it I might get something wrong because it's something that's relatively new to me but it is worth looking into that but while your tokens in here you kind of get uh, it does increase a little bit in value you get a little bit of interest it's almost like putting your money in a bank but when you get it back out later uh, you'll have a little bit more but obviously with that impermanent loss there could be um, you know you, what it's basically saying is if you just held the token outside of here and the price went up and you sold it, you probably would have made more money than if the token was in here. But if you got no, you don't want to sell it anyway, you just want to keep and keep and keep holding it, then just pop it in here. Now, some people already have, as you can see, if you go to the liquidity holders, uh, the top one, which is a burn address, which is what I put in when I launched. This one is what I added afterwards with my personal address. So I'm just leaving it in there. This one is someone within our approved community that believes in the project. So they bought uh, the total they could and they put it straight in here. So thank you for that. And also the other addresses in here are also people that have added. This is the mysterious address that I've talked about quite a lot, but I've, I've now found out that it is just pancake swap fees. So it's in there all the time. It's not as romantic as I thought it was. It's just on every contract because it has to be there. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the people in there at the moment. If you want to add your liquidity to here as well, and then you can, but yeah, it's entirely up to you. So I'm gonna put this in, first of all, um, as a little bit of a test, I'll put in, uh, I'm gonna just put in 0 0.5 BNB as a test with those amount of tokens, and I will approve it. And we've just got to confirm. Now, this next, next bit, once it goes through, is really important because it gives you something back. And what it gives you back is called Cake LP. It doesn't matter what token you add liquidity to, you can add it on anything, and you get back something called Cake LP all the time. Oh, that's new. I've never seen that before. I like it. So, yeah, we'll get rid of that. And uh, we're now going to say, yes, we will supply. And we'll confirm. Now we wait, and uh, it takes 
our tokens and it takes our BNB and it adds some uh, adds it to the thing. Now it's saying here, click on this to add the KKLP to your MetaMask. If you click on that button and you do this quite a few times in all different contracts, then your take LP in your wallet, you won't know which one it is because you'll end up with loads of them. And um, it gets very confusing if you do this a lot. Now, sometimes if you're a developer, uh, what you can do is send your cake LP to the burn address. So when people say burning liquidity, that's what they've done. So the best way to, to think about this is like, I always say it's like you've put your coat or your jacket into a cloakroom at a nightclub and they give you a ticket back. Uh, and if you want to go and get your coat back, you have to give them that ticket. Uh, you have to redeem it to get your coat. Without giving them the ticket, you can't get that back. Now, if you destroy the ticket, they will keep your coat forever. So when I get my cake LP, that's like that cloakroom ticket. Now, there's a few things I can do with it. I can just hold it in my wallet. Uh, I can burn it, so that means it's gone. Or I can put it in a locker. Now, if you put it in a locker, it's timed, and uh, you have to wait for the timer to expire before you can get it back. So if you're a developer adding the main liquidity to a project, you would normally do one of those things. Usually, you'll either burn it or you'll put it in a locker, and that protects your buyers. But if you're just doing this to add some liquidity to Gen 2, just keep it in your wallet. And then when you want to remove your liquidity later, you can go and take it back out. So think of KKLP as being a ticket that you give in to be able to get your liquidity out. Now, what I mean by that is you give them your KKLP, they give you your original BNB and your original Gen2 tokens, plus a little bit of interest on both of those things as well. So that's kind of the way it works. So if I click on this, it would appear in my wallet and it would be called KKLP. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that because I wanna rename it. And I'm gonna show you how to do this instead. So I'm gonna say close. And now inside here, if I go to uh, Gen2 uh, again, and I click on the holders of the liquidity, then in here we have the actual, uh, this address here is the actual address of the, um, the liquidity token, that KKLP token. So if I select that and I copy it, I can then go to my MetaMask and I can go to my assets and I can add a new token and paste it in. And there you go, look, it's called KKLP. I can edit it and I can name it something different. So I'm gonna name it Gen 2 LP because now I know what it is and I don't get confused. Uh, I've got other wallets that are completely full of cake LP and I don't know which is which, it's really frustrating. So if you did want to send it to a burn address, uh, you could do that. So I've got this, I can say send, I can select my burn address and, and send it and then that would be gone and I wouldn't be able to get the, the BNB or the tokens that I put in there back out, which is what I did do when I added the original liquidity. I'm not gonna do it with this, but when I added the, the original liquidity, which is this one, when I got that KKLP token, I sent it to the burn address. So that's what's happened here. And it just means I can never remove it and it keeps you guys safe. So we don't need that anymore. So I'll go back over here. And because I've got that ticket, that KKLP, what we'll do now is we'll just make sure that we can remove it so you know how to do it. So there it is, you come over to here to your liquidity, just like before, and it should show you your current liquidity. If it doesn't, then uh, click on find other LP tokens and paste in the address and it should find it. Uh, it might find it just from the token address. Yeah, put the token in there uh, and then it would find it. So we're gonna click on this and then we've got the option to remove and you can click on how much you want to remove. So we're going to remove it all. And uh, it's not going to remove all the liquidity. It's just the little bit that I've put in with this wallet because this wallet is a separate one to the wallets that I've used to put other liquidity in. So it's not going to remove uh, anything other than what I've just added while I'm on this video. So you set the amount and you approve and then the transaction goes through and you should get back your BNB and your Gen 2 and it will then destroy that cake LP token that it gave us. So that, that disappears. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't work. Uh, but David told me the other day that if you click on receive um, uh, WBNB like this, it swaps it over to wrapped BNB instead of normal BNB. And then, and then sometimes that works and you can get it back. So we'll try the BNB one first, see if it works. And we'll sign it and we'll say remove. And this is the point where it sometimes fails. When you click this button, oh, this time it worked. So it did work, I'm not gonna confirm it, but it would give me the actual BNB. So I'm gonna reject it. And if it, if it had not worked, this is what I would have done. So I would have changed it over to wrapped BNB. I would have approved it. I would have signed it. 
and then I would have removed it. Now, the other one, if I'd have let that go through, I'd just get some BNB and some Gen2 into my wallet. But I'm going to do this one, because I'm going to show you what to do if you get the wrapped BNB instead. So we'll confirm that, and I'll confirm it. So now I've got, uh, that liquidity is gone, and I've now got some Gen2 tokens and some wrapped BNB. Now, I don't want wrapped BNB, so I'm going to go over to Exchange, and I'm going to pop into here. Um, I want to swap wrapped BNB, so I'm going to search for it, that one, wrapped BNB, and the maximum. It says I've got none. It's not appeared yet. And I want to swap it to normal BNB. There we go. It's just appeared now, look. So I'll pop that in like that, and I'll unwrap it, and I'll confirm. And after a few moments, I'll have no more of this because it's useless to me, and I'll have BNB instead. It's taking a while. I'm going to press it again. Yeah, this this is what I'm doing now, where I'm just pressing it and it's not doing anything. That's what PancakeSwap does sometimes when you try and remove your liquidity. Now, the other day I was trying to whitelist someone's wallet and it took eight hours before it went, oh, this done it now. It took eight hours before it went from, um, from false to true. So sometimes it's just the Binance Smart Chain that is slow. So we pressed the button, there was no response. After a while, it suddenly went through. So that's sometimes what happens when you try and remove your liquidity. Sometimes you press the button, you wait, you wait, you wait, and nothing happens and you think it's trapped. But sometimes it's just traffic. So what I'm going to do now is go back to liquidity. I don't have any liquidity in anything anymore because I've removed it. So I want to add some liquidity. I need to get that token address again to do it. So we go back over to Gen2 and we'll select this. You can see this is Gen2 and you can see the liquidity is now at 12,000. So it's a, it's just over 10%. So I want it to be higher than that. So that's, uh, I feel more comfortable if there's a lot more liquidity in. So I'm going to take the address. Go over to here. I'm going to paste in the address of Gen2. And I'm going to paste in the BNB. I'm going to put all of my Gen2 in there, 1.6 BNB. I'll supply that. I'll confirm it. And I'll confirm again. And I, this time I will just click on the button uh, because I've already added the token uh, to my uh, MetaMask. So it should um, keep it called what I said before. It looks like it's not going to, but I'm going to do it anyway, just as an experiment. Let's see if it does or not. So I'll add it to the uh, MetaMask. And now I'm going to look at my assets in MetaMask. And you'll see I have this. Ah, oh, they, they've called it KKLP. Can we change its name from here? Hide it. Account details. KKLP. No, we can't. So yeah, they just call them all KKLP, which is a bit confusing. You just end up with loads of KKLP. But I mean, this, this wallet is one that I created for this... Um, this project. So we've got no Gen 2 in there anymore. Uh, it is the uh, marketing, promotions and developer wallet, which is why it has 6.36 6 BNB in there. We've already spent some of it on marketing. Uh, I've now turned this wallet right down, so it's not going to get any more going into it. And I've turned up the liquidity instead, because at the moment, the liquidity is more important than the marketing wallet. So that's, uh, that's what's going on. But uh, it does have to cover some of the expenses that have gone into creating Gen 2 before we launched. None of that's been taken out yet. It also has got to pay for some people that um, actually donated money for the initial liquidity as well. So once that's happened, the rest of it is going to be spent on marketing. But we have spent some on marketing already. I'm a, a fantastic guy on um, Twitter who's uh, just posted uh, a token for us. So let's go over to his Twitter. And he has posted as a token in here. Here we go, look. So he's posted this. So yeah, go on over to Twitter and um, and retweet this. And we've a lot of people have replied. But yeah, if you go, I'll put a link in the description to this. So yeah, please go and uh, and retweet it and help us to get the word out. We've got a bit more liquidity in there now because of what I've just done. And I know that other people are waiting for instructions on how to do it. So a few other people are going to be adding in, uh, liquidity as well. So you will see uh, over here that this is going to increase. So um, that's the value at the moment, 12662. I'm not sure if mine will um, will already be in there or not, but we'll see when we refresh. It's gone up a tiny bit. So mine was probably already in there, unless it's not noticed it yet, because things take some time. So there we go, guys. If you do want to add liquidity, uh, then that's the way you do it. Uh, sometimes when you try and take it back out later, pancake swap uh, does... Um, sometimes you press the button and nothing happens, but usually it's just due to congestion and traffic in the Binance Smart Chain. But changing it over to the wrapped BNB can actually cause it to work. So there we go. Um, ah, 
that is why, let me think, when I was thinking about when I renamed the Cake LP, whether it was because I did the wrapped BNB, it made the difference, but it wasn't, that was just taking it out. So there we go, if you can add liquidity, we'd really appreciate it. So if you're intending to just hold your tokens, then you can pop them in here with, uh, with some uh, BNB as well, and they can just sit in there and generate some uh, interest for you. But do look into impermanent loss, uh, research that, find out exactly what that is, and then uh, you can make the decision yourself whether you think this is something that you want to do or whether you just want to hold your tokens. It's your call. See you soon. Bye-bye.